unpopular opinion, I really like this book. Up top, spoilers for the Song of Susanna. It's a bridge book, yes. It's a setup book, yes. I mean, just look at its size and where it's placed in the release schedule of the last three books, like, you know, the big epic conclusion to the Dark Tower series. Oh, I got heartburn. Oh, so bad. Anyway, everything about this book, everything that there is about it, just screams bridge the gap. Get from point A to point B. Do all the prep work and the setup work for the big epic final conclusion to the series that everybody's jonesing for, or at least the people who give a shit about the Dark Tower. And yet, somehow, it manages to be so much more than that. First off, on an enjoyment level, for me personally, I find myself, both the first time around and this time around, I find myself so much more invested and interested in what's happening in this book than I did in what was happening in The Wolves of the Kala. Partially because of what I said in the last video of it being a rehash of older ideas, but I felt like they were done better the first time around, whereas this one, I feel, is the same thing. It's a rehash of older ideas, but actually this time they feel more a little bit more dynamic and a little bit more fun. Whereas the first time around, I was almost getting bored with the, with the concept. That being the whole Deta Odetta thing, was wearing out its welcome and the first time around, and I was super thrilled when they were merged and Susanna was formed. Whereas this time around, I was super afraid because I saw this coming and I thought, ah, sh**. I was done with the Odetta Detta crap a long time ago. I don't want to go back. We just did a rehash in the last book. Let's not do this again. And we do it again, and it's great. Probably because Mia's not actually another personality of Susanna. Mia is literally like an entity in and of herself. She is actually a demon who's made a deal to become mortal, but it's like she's she's a, a, a person in and of herself, which then, you know, occupies Susanna, kind of like the whole multiple personality thing from before, but then just the fact of her being there triggers some things with Susanna's personality. It was such a fresh, fun new take that it didn't feel like retreading old ground. It, felt like that old ground laid the groundwork for this to happen and for this to be so much more fun because that happened. This was informed by what had been done in the past and enriched by it, you know, versus the last book where it felt more like a retread, which if you want to know how I felt about that, go watch that video. I really don't want to bang on about that again. Also, this is tension done right. Once again, I hate to go on about the last book, but the not the manufactured tension of the last book, which was like, oh, Roland knows, but we're not going to talk to Susanna. Oh, Jake knows, but we keep it a secret. Or Eddie knows, but don't tell. Everybody's got the same secret and they're keeping the secret from somebody. And it, the tension felt manufactured, like it was unnecessary. It didn't need to be there. And this one, this is tension. This is genuine tension. This is tension done right. Mia has taken control of Susanna and jumped through the door. We don't have Black 13. We don't have Susanna. Susanna's going to give birth to a demon baby, and we don't know how to get to her. Like, this is tension, and this is, like, legitimate, genuine tension, and it's really well done. If the Mia thing was done right, and the tension is done right, and everything in this book is done right, right? We should probably at least take a minute to talk about Stephen King. <laughs> Stephen King put himself in the book, wrote himself into the story. This is a huge point of contention. It always has been people either, I was going to say people love it or hate it, but I think people just hate it. I don't think anyone loves it. I think it's either you, you hate it or you deal with it. Uh, that, that sounds better. But... This is, for me, it's weird. It was weird back then, and it's weird now. It actually was less weird now than it was the first time, and I was able to handle it better. The first time all really pulled me right out. Um, 
like right off the jump. And this, I've said this is like my favorite series multiple times, uh, but that was rough. The first, I was like, oh, sh what the f what are you doing, dude? Um, and and it was super awkward the first time. It was much less awkward this time. But this is let's let's be real. This is the most meta thing that's ever been meta. Like this was this was the OG meta story. And to be fair, if this was released now, people would probably accept this and handle this a whole lot better now than they did back when it was released. Because let's be honest, it right now being meta is super fucking trendy. Back when he wrote this, being meta wasn't cool. It wasn't trendy at all like it is now. So now people would probably be like, oh yeah, that was for you, you know, sign of the times. You know, back then it was like, whoa. What are you, what is happening right now? So I guess he was maybe ahead of his time? Hell, I don't know. Either way, as, as odd as it is and as strange of a decision as it might seem to put yourself into your own story, King then ultimately handles it with a certain finesse that he tends to handle all of his really strange things with um, that makes it feel much more acceptable, approachable, and you can just tolerable in the story. And it ultimately does work, I feel. Um, that's not to say that it's not awkward and without its flaws, but I think it does ultimately work. He just, in general, has a tendency to put things into a story in, or in just ideas that he has into a story, and you're like, this isn't, this will never pan out, dude. I don't know what you're thinking or why you're trying this. And then he has a way of finessing it into the story that makes it feel acceptable to be there. I don't know how, uh, anyway. I would say that in his approach in this particular subject that he decided to infuse into this story, I'd say he steps very carefully and very lightly with very few missteps along the way. Although it is still probably my least favorite part of the book. Then moving on to Jake and Callahan, there's really not much to say about them in this book. If this were the bridge book between five and seven, the Jake and Callahan story is the part of the book that feels by far the most bridge book. And that in and of itself make, makes me not, I don't know. There's something about that whole bridge book thing that I'm always like, just get through it, get, get, get it over with. You know, so that's how their storyline kind of feels to me. Although, that ending, that note that he chooses to end their particular thread on is one of the most king ways to end something. And it's just pitch perfect. I love it. Um, that might be a love it or hate it moment. And I absolutely love it. All in all, I feel like this was a really strong entry into the series, whether I, I just can't help but feel like that's an unpopular opinion. And I know, here I go. I'm going to give this one as, uh, I, like I said in the last video, this is really where I'm getting down to. I really want to know where my headspace lands on these last three books. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give this one an 8.5. And I know that's a higher score than the Wolves of the Kala. Fight me about it in the comments, but I enjoy this one so much more. Not okay. Not so much more, but I legitimately enjoy this one more. You would think this one would be the bridge book and the last one would be like, I don't know, whatever. I'm gonna shut up about it now. But yeah, 8.5 and we'll just, let's walk our way straight up to the Dark Tower and see where that one lands next month. Thank you everybody for watching and I'll see you next time.